Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the ColourPop Strawberry Shake Collection. ColourPop has released a new monochromatic collection once again, and they were kind enough to send over everything my way. So everything you see in today's video was sent to me. I did not purchase anything with my own money, but that will never sway my opinion. You guys know I'm always 100% honest with my opinions, whether it was sent or bought with my own money. So I do want to clear that up before before we got started. But in today's video, I will be running through all the products in this collection, but mainly just focusing on the eyeshadow palette. So yeah, if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts, seeing some swatches, comparisons, and my three looks at the end, then just continue watching. So once again, I am monochromatic with my makeup, my top, this pamphlet. I'm gonna be reading off this to give you guys some product info, but for today's video, I thought I would just hit every single product that comes in this collection and and just go from that. So first, let's start off with the Strawberry Shake 9 Pan Eyeshadow Palette. This is another addition to the monochromatic palette family. This is 12 US dollars and the description says that it contains bright pinks, bold reds, and fresh peaches to create the ultimate summer ready look. In this palette, you do get six mattes and three metallics. One of them woke. It did come in the Chasing Rainbows palette that was part of their holiday collection. 2018 and that was like a limited edition palette but I did figure that out when I was finding my dupes and comparisons that Woke was an existing shade but it was a limited shade but now it is in this palette but I thought I would let you guys know other than that every other shadow in this palette is completely new. So when I first saw this palette I initially thought this looked exactly like the watermelon palette and also the ooh la la. It kind of gave me a vibe of both and I wasn't really so excited about this palette just because I'm like like, oh, like I didn't really feel like we needed another red or pink palette. After playing with it, I was completely wrong and when I was finding my dupes and swatches, nothing was really a dupe or comparison. A lot of these shades are very unique and again, I feel like Colourpop just knows what they are missing in the collection and I think this is a really good palette. Compared to the Watermelon palette, it's much more red. And then the Ooh La La is a bit more brighter pinks and it has a bit of purples in it. But the Strawberry is definitely more muted. I think the pinks in here are a lot more muted they're not as bright and it's a little bit more peachy in here so it kind of just falls in between everything so that's a good thing it's not like the other palettes but it does give me similar vibes and I think once you start creating eye looks you definitely could create a similar eye look with the other palettes that you already have but I don't think it's completely the same I feel like maybe some of you guys can see this coming but I do wish that there was one slightly darker color this shade down here I can't remember how to say it I had to keep using my Google Translate to help me pronounce it, like Dankri? I forgot. But this shade down here, it is like the darkest shade in the palette. Although I was able to create a half cut crease, and I do like the half cut crease that I'm wearing, I think there is a lot of depth in there. I feel like they could have taken one shade darker, and then that would have been a really good solid palette for me, because you get a lot of medium tones and a lot of transitions, so I think just adding one darker shade would have been my ideal palette, you know what I mean? All in all, I was able to create a half cut crease that I was happy with, and a very intense smoky eye, so... So the question is, would I recommend this palette to you guys? If the Ooh La La palette was too bright, too many purples, you wanted less purples, and if the Watermelon palette was too red, um, you wanted it more pinky toned, then this palette would probably be more ideal for you. These pinks are a lot more muted, and I feel like because they are more muted, you can create more everyday looks while still creating bright and vibrant looks as well. Like I feel like it has the best of both. I will be doing a video just talking about the 9 pan palettes only, and which one I'm my favorites. As of right now, this one definitely is not my favorite. I still prefer the Ooh La La and the Watermelon palette over this. It could just be that I had those two palettes for much longer than this one. This one is still very, very new to me. But as of now, it's not like my favorite nine pan, um, but it's not my least favorite nine pan, if you know what I mean. That's all I have to say about the palette. I think I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to purchase it or not. The next thing in the strawberry collection is the Strawberries and Cream Blush Stick Duo. This is $14. 
colors. I believe these are two new shades. The light stick is called Star Bright and the blush stick is called 25 slash 8. I haven't used these. I'm going to add this into a future giveaway. The blush sticks and light sticks are not my favorite formula from Colourpop. Like I like them but I think just the form of them I don't like. I still prefer my super shot blushes much more than the light sticks. So I'm just going to pass this on to one of you guys in a future giveaway. We then have two of the press powder blushes. These are eight US dollars each. This shade here is called Shortcake. It's the lighter shade and then the darker shade is called Seed You Later. I actually really like both. I think they are very very pretty wearable shades. They can look very intimidating in the pan but I think they are a very natural shade if you use a light hand with it. You can definitely build it up and make it more pinky and brighter but I do think it is a very pretty natural everyday shade. If I had to pick one or the other I personally would prefer Seed You Later. I do like more darker blushes. I think they just complement my skin tone a lot better but I do like shortcake so I think these two are very pretty. I think a lot of people when they see them they might not want to purchase just because it can be a little bit intimidating but pink blushes there is a time and place for them. We then also have two Jolly Much eyeshadows. These both are eight US dollars each. One is called Strawberry Jam and one is called Strawberry Jelly. I actually really like the Jelly Much shadows. I think they have just so much dimension to it. They're so easy to use and they just look really really beautiful on the eyes and I actually really like both of these two shades. Strawberry Jelly is more of like a vibrant coral pink and then Strawberry Jam is more of like a bronze orange peachy tone. They're both very very pretty that I actually use both of them within my three looks so you know I actually really liked it. There's just so many ways to use Jelly Munch shadows. I do have like a whole video dedicated to them which I will link somewhere here for you guys but I really enjoyed these. I think these are very beautiful shades so I definitely would recommend these. But like I mentioned in my Jelly Munch review, um, the only downside with these is that they will dry out fairly quickly so I would say maybe just pick up one that way you can actually use it before the other one dries out. Something like that, I don't know. And then we have two ultra glossy lips. These are in their high shine formula, which comes with the brush tip applicator. Colourpop has two different kinds of ultra glossy lips. One is their high shine and one is the original. The original comes with the doe fit applicator and then this one comes with the brush tip. So these are both in the high shine brush tip applicator. We have Easy Bake and Very Good. I'm wearing Easy Bake on my lips right now. I actually, again, like both of these shades. I think with this collection, they just came out with a lot of formulas that I just like from Colourpop. So the pressed blushes, the jelly mudge, the pressed shadows and the ultra glossy lips are like a favorite of mine. So I kind of enjoyed everything because I like the formula. It's just a matter of a fact if you like the shade. Out of the two, I personally like Very Good, the brighter one. I find that it just brightens up my lips and I prefer this one more than Easy Bake. But nonetheless, I think there's like a time and place for both with different eye looks. So all in all, with everything else in this collection, if you like the formula and you like like the shades that you see then obviously I would recommend them. I do see myself using Very Good very very often. And the last thing in this collection is the So Frissa So Clean 4th Ray Beauty set. This is 24 US dollars. You get the strawberry face milk, strawberry seed oil and the by the boo shell lippy scrub. So I actually tried the face milk and the oil once and it's hard for me to create an opinion on skincare products if I only used it once but the face milk I was very intrigued by. It was my first time using one of their face milks so I'll have to keep you guys updated on that. I don't want to throw out an opinion if I haven't really tried it out properly or given it a fair chance. But I am using it. I'm trying it out. I haven't tried the lippy scrub yet though. So that I have no idea. So that was my quick little review through this whole strawberry shake collection. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Now let's move on to my comparisons, my swatches, and then my three looks.
To get started with the first look, I'm going to be taking the shade Shake It Up and this is going to be our transition shadow. I'm actually going to put this at the outer corner of my eye first, just stamping on the product there. And then I'm going to start sweeping that into my crease and start blending that up towards my brow bone. This shade is a little dark to be the initial transition shadow, so just take your time blending that out. It is a very easy shade to blend, so you'll have no issues with that, but it is a darker shade, so you do want to take extra time blending this out. I'm also going to take that same shade onto my lower lash line as well but this time I'm actually going to stop it towards the middle of my lower lash line usually I would bring it all the way in Next, I am taking my milkshake. I'm going to be doing a very similar technique. I'm just going to put that right at the outer third of my eye. And then once most of the product has left my brush, I'm going to bring that towards the inner part of my crease. Most of the product is going to go at the outer corner just because I want the inner corner to be very light. But I'm also going to take my milkshake also on my lower lash line as well, but this time using a definer brush and just really pressing that up against my bottom waterline. Now I am using Woke. I'm going to put that right at the inner part of my lid where we didn't place any products previously. It is a lighter pink shade and you will really see that gradient on your eyes. I'm going to bring that up towards my crease area and just kind of like buff and diffuse that out. Taking the shade Delish, I'm going to pop this right at the inner corner of my eyes. I'm also going to bring that towards my lower lash line right at the inner corner where we didn't place any of that product. Just because the whole eye look is all matte, I think popping a pop of shimmer in the inner corners is a really nice touch to this eye look. Using the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Honey Dude, I'm going to use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline. This is really going to help open up the eyes and just really brighten up the look. And this, guys, is going to complete the first look. For my lashes, I am wearing the Kiss Lashes in the style Ritzy. For my lip pairing, I decided to go with the Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Easy Bake from the Strawberry Collection. But I hope you guys enjoyed this look. It's something very easy to create. It's more on the, like, muted side of pink, so I feel like it's quite wearable. I love how it turned out, and I hope you guys liked it too. Moving along to the second look, I'm going to be taking the shade My Milkshake and this is going to be my transition shadow. Again, this shade is not so light to be like an initial transition shadow, so I am just using a light hand with it and just taking my time blending this out into my crease using windshield wiping motions as always. I'm also going to bring this shadow onto my lower lash line as well, just sweeping it from the outer corner right to the inner corner. But as you can see, at the outer corner, I am connecting the shadows at that point. Now taking the shade Take a Sip, I'm going to pack this shade onto my lid. I'm going to stamp on the color there first and then slowly blend that up towards my transition shadow. Kind of creating a soft gradient, you can't really see too much of a difference, but Take a Sip is more of like a vibrant pink and it's really going to give that great undertone for this monochromatic smoky eye. Now I'm taking the shade Duckery and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing, just packing that onto my lid space, but I'm going to focus it a little bit lower onto my lid, like closer to my lash line. I'm not going to blend this up so high like I did with Take a Sip. I'm also going to take that same shade and push this up against my lower lash line by smudging it against my waterline. Now I'm going to be taking the Jelly Much eyeshadow in the shade Strawberry Jelly. I'm going to just take a little bit of this onto a dry brush and just pack that all over my lid. It's going to give a little bit of specks of glimmer. It's not like a huge metallic. I think the glitter sparkles in this Jelly Much shadow is so beautiful and I think it complements the palette really, really nicely. So I'm pretty much just going to use this as a base. 
Because now I'm going to take the shade Whipped and this is going right on top of that Jelly Mud Shadow just to enhance any of those glitter metallic particles. And then I'm just going to take the shade Delish and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners and also my brow bone. To finish off the look, I'm taking the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Venus and I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline. It is the perfect eyeliner for this look. And this, guys, is the second look completed. I think you guys saw this one come in. It's just a monochromatic look with a monochromatic palette. But for my lashes, I am wearing the Natalia Lights from House of Lashes. For my blush, I went with See You Later from the collection. And for my lip pairing, I decided to go with the gloss in the shade Berry Good. And that completes this monochromatic strawberry eye look. I really like how it turns out. I hope you guys enjoyed this second look. Now getting started with the final look, I'm going to be taking the shade Paper Straw and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. I'm also going to bring this up quite high because we are doing a half cut crease. I do want this shadow to peek through underneath everything else. So making sure we are blending this up towards our brow bone. Next, I'll be taking the shade Shake It Up and I'm going to place this right at the outer corner of my eye first and then I'm going to bring it in towards the inner part of my crease just so there's a little bit of depth around the crease area. Again, when creating a half cut crease, you do want some darkness around the crease area. That way, the half cut crease can contrast against that shadow and really make the half cut crease pop out even more. Now I'm going to be taking the shade Duckery and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing but I'm using a smaller brush and when you use a smaller brush typically it does make the shadow a lot more pigmented and darker just because when you're using a smaller brush it is focusing it in a smaller area so that's what we exactly want. We want to create a darker shadow and more depth to this half cut crease that way when we cut the crease out it can pop out even more like I have been saying. Now I am taking my P. Louise eyeshadow base and I'm going to use this to help me cut my crease out. I'm going to place this right at the inner part of my lid space and then I'm going to bring it up towards my crease area, making sure I'm passing the natural curve of my crease. Just so when you look up, you still can see the half cut crease and there's going to be no transfer. Once I have the basic shape of my half cut crease out, I will take a thinner, smaller paintbrush to really carve out the crease and make that very sharp and defined. But now I'm going to take the Jelly Mudge eyeshadow in the shade Strawberry Jam and I'm going to place that right on top of the half cut crease that we just cut out. This is just going to be a base for the metallic shadow that we're going to place on top next. I think the Jelly Mudge shadows, they work great as a base. They have so much dimension to it that it really just brings out any eyeshadow color that you're going to place on top. So taking Berry Fine, this is going right on top of the Jelly Mud Shadow. I think these two shadows complement each other very nicely. They have that orangey peach undertone and the dimension with the two, it really just complements each other very nicely. Taking Duckery once again, I'm going to use this on my bottom lash line. I'm just going to sweep that all over right from the outer corner to the inner corner, just getting a very smoked out, diffused lower lash line. I will then take my ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Venus and I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline.
Alright guys, so this is going to complete the final look for my lashes. I am wearing the Iconic Lights from House of Lashes. For my blush, I decided to go with the blush shade in Shortcake. For my lip pairing, I went with Easy Bake Ultra Glossy Lip. Any other makeup details will be in the description box down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this peachy pink cut crease from me. You guys know I love doing half cut creases, so I hope you guys enjoyed this final look. So that guys completes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you guys did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you guys think of this new collection? What are your favorites? Are you gonna pick anything up after watching this video? I want you guys to go to down to comments either way and just read my pinned comment. I think it will explain a lot of things about my mood and just my uploading schedule over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, just scroll down to the pinned comments and that will hopefully explain some stuff but with that being said i just want to thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already have a good day i love you guys and i will see you in my next video bye